Hey guys, what's up? So on my list of the top 10 programming languages, I had mentioned C Sharp and uh, mainly I wanted to just kind of move away from the same list that I had the year before because uh, I had JavaScript as number one in 2016 and into 2017 I had picked C Sharp and a lot of people like balked at that and I understand a lot of people think I'm a Microsoft fanboy, which isn't true, but um, one of the major reasons why I picked C Sharp as one of the top languages of 2017 was because of Xamarin. And uh, Xamarin is this product that was actually created by a San Francisco-based company several years ago. So I think it was four or five years ago that Xamarin was created. Um, it actually had a lot to do with the uh, Mono project. So um, the, the Mono project goes way back uh, in the open source. I was actually a guy named Miguel de Casa, a, um, a developer who is also, I believe, self-taught um, from Mexico originally. And um, he was a big part of the entire Mono project, which was about taking the .NET framework and making it work uh, on Linux and Mac and things like that. Um, so they gave rise to Xamarin, and then Xamarin just started you know, rising in popularity. But the problem with Xamarin, in my opinion, was number one, it wasn't free because they were a company that needed to make money. Um, and then number two, you know, Xamarin was pushing their own Xamarin Studios. But in earlier, um, in, in early 2016, around February or March, Microsoft bought the Xamarin Studios and actually merged it into their latest version of Visual Studio. So Xamarin, where it used to be expensive and, and cost a lot for developers to be able to use it, it's now free um, to, to a certain extent. So if you're a business and you're trying to make money, you're going to have to buy a business license. But if you're uh, an individual, I think an indie developer, you might have a lesser, I'm not sure, we could look at the pricing here. But... Um, I know that this is actually wrapped into the Visual Studio Community Edition, which Microsoft made free. And that's another thing, another reason why I picked, you know, Microsoft is making a lot of changes in the development world in order to stay relevant. Microsoft's a huge company. They're not going to just go and fall by the wayside. Um, they, they have more money and, and more revenue than even Google. So, um, I mean, we've seen some of the crazy acquisitions that they made, you know, with Skype. And um, that was a long time ago, obviously. But, you know, they, pur they purchased... Um, just recently LinkedIn, so merging with Xamarin. Um, they're working very heavily with Unity, and Unity Engine is one of the best game engines that I've experienced as far as um, you know, being friendly to, to developers and noobs like myself. Um, so you can see Xamarin Studio still has their own um, studio, which was being pushed, but everybody kind of uses Visual Studio, at least in the .NET C Sharp world. And one of the biggest benefits of Xamarin is the fact that you can write your mobile applications in C Sharp. And it's relatively close to native. Um, so a lot of people will be like, oh, well, it's not native and, and you're not, you know, you, 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 you um, basically they'll say, if you're not writing native, you're never gonna be able to make as, as good of apps. And um, a buddy of mine was actually mentioning that, that Xamarin, I mean, it has some pretty legit applications that you wouldn't really expect to be created with Xamarin. So if we just look at a few of these things, like um, if we look at gaming, um, you can see Skulls of the Shogun um, was created, and this is actually a game that I've seen. But you know, actual you know games are being created on this platform using Xamarin. Um, just basic uh, applications. If you go to this uh, website, the Xamarin.com forward slash customers, you can see all the different applications that are actually using Xamarin, including Cinemark, which is a humongous um, movie company, a movie theater chain in the United States. Um, so. A lot of major companies are using Xamarin. It's not just some sort of fly-by-night product. And to me, I, I equate this as being like, like JetBlue. I mean, major, major companies are using this application or, and this, uh, this setup. So they're writing their mobile applications in C Sharp and using the, the Xamarin framework. They're releasing to Android and iOS and all that stuff. And, and it runs relatively close to the hardware, so relatively close to native um, also at a very minimal fee. And another thing is, you know, the C Sharp language is actually a very well-designed language. It is very, very suited for large development. And I'm talking millions of lines of code, hundreds if not thousands of developers. Um, and that's what C Sharp was, was mainly you know, built for. So I don't know, being a, a guy that likes Python, a guy that likes Perl, a guy who spends most of his time writing JavaScript these days, I think C Sharp is, is a pretty you know, nice language. The only downside for me um, is that when I compare uh, C Sharp ASP.NET framework, number one, I think Django is a better framework than, than ASP.NET. I just I like Django and everything it does better than ASP. 
Um, but beyond that, it was the simple fact that I can get a $20 Linode host and get a website that gets 200,000 visitors a month on a Django application running Python, where if I would have hosted on Azure using C Sharp, um, granted the cloud may have been a little bit faster and I could have had some elasticity for making sure that you know I have servers set up in China and, and everything like that, which a lot of those benefits the cloud provides. However, for a, a specific, you know, an individual developer that's running a content-based application that never makes any money, you know, it's not really a suitable option. And even to this day, I feel like it's not a very suitable option for me. Um, so when I created Hipster Code earlier this year, that that website, you know, gets roughly, uh, I would say, probably a couple thousand views or not views, but a couple thousand visitors uh, at most a week. And um, you know, it, it just it costs me nothing, and 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 I do it on a Linode shared host. And uh, so the the finan financial reasons is why I really don't ever choose a, a .NET or Microsoft platform. Another thing too is the licensing for something like SQL Server is not nearly as attractive as something like Postgres or uh, MySQL. So it's not all good with Microsoft, but um, the reason why I'm, I'm talking about Xamarin today is just simply that I haven't been involved in any side projects and pro really since Hipster Code, and I think it's because I've also been so busy at work and also this channel um, takes quite a bit of my time and the kids are back in school and everything. So um, just a, a lot of, uh, not a lot of time, I think. And also, I would say that overall Hipster Code was uh, was somewhat of a, um, I, I guess I, I didn't really find the success that I was hoping to find there. Um, so granted, I, I didn't, you know, I, I pretty much stopped pursuing it after I spent a couple long months trying to get it off the ground. Uh, the, the motivation to continue uh, to try to expand it, which really any sort of startup takes that, you know, that constant motivation and work and effort. And I just, I just don't have it. Um, so if anything, I'm, I'm very just, I'm satisfied doing what I do during the day, playing around on the side and, and also doing this YouTube channel. I think that's, that's quite a bit of, uh, of effort that it already takes to do that. So, um, I don't know. And, but what I'm, what I'm talking about tonight is that like I sat down tonight and I said, you know what, I, I want to, uh, I think I want to learn Xamarin. Like, uh, I want to get this, uh, I want to go through the headaches because this is, it's going to be a headache. Um, this isn't something that just works. In fact, last time I tried Xamarin, I was like running into immediate problems. Um, so even just getting everything set up to initially start creating some basic Android applications, I found uh, to be relatively involved. And, um, you know, the motivation wasn't there. But I think, you know, it's something that, you know, mobile apps are going to continue to have their place. Uh, responsive web design doesn't solve the mobile first problem. I mean, having a much more native approach to your, your mobile app where you can download off the Google um, app store, I think is just a much smoother experience. So when it comes to like using um, like hotel bookings, I'm going to download hotels.com, the app, or I'm going to download Priceline um, or even the Expedia or TripAdvisor. I could go to the mobile application but the uh, not mobile application. I'm sorry. I could go to the web application on my mobile phone, but the mobile you know application seems to actually provide me a better experience, at least for the most part. Um, some of the times, though, I think it, it you know it doesn't have some sort of feature that I need on the website, and that's somewhat um, disappointing. Like I would say, uh, the YouTube application, and there's also a YouTube Creator app, and it doesn't have it has it's missing like half of the things that you need. Um, to do with YouTube, which are only available on a desktop. So that's one of the downfalls, uh, I think, of a mobile app. But other than that, I mean, we need the convenience of mobile apps. And uh, and that said, Xamarin is a pretty good option when it comes to delivering something like that. And you can obviously see if you go through all these uh, customers that, that Xamarin has and the fact that Microsoft just recently purchased them, uh, made this stuff free, made it free with Visual Studio. Visual Studio Code is actually one of the most popular uh, coding uh, editors is actually really taking a lot of thunder away from the Atom editor. But um, like my Python tutorials I did earlier this year, um, that was done with the Visual Studio Code and uh, and it's just a much, much easier experience I think than dealing with Atom, uh, A-T-O-M editor. So there's just a lot of, uh, lot of reasons I think of why C Sharp is poised to be um, a continuing you know, presence in, in the development community, at least in the 2017. 
All right, so that's really it. But um, just a few other things. You can see Pinterest and Slack are also using it. So a lot of reasons to use Xamarin. I'm going to probably fill you guys in in a couple of weeks, let you know where I am on the process of, of trying to learn some of this stuff. But this uh, this seems like where I'm going to actually focus my attention probably if, uh, you know, at least over the next few few weeks, maybe a few months, and see if I get anywhere on it. But anyway, guys, that's really all I got tonight. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please vote up the video. I appreciate your uh, support and have a good night. Bye. Hey, guys. So a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this, in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.